Hello everyone, uh, we are live on YouTube, just waiting for a little video to play and then we carry on from there. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year to everyone. I welcome you all on our first interaction of the year 2022. Today is our 74th episode under Trends Literature Series. Do follow us on our YouTube channel, Trends Literature Series, by just a click of a button. Uh, today, indeed, I am proud to welcome Mr. Kulpreet Yadav. He's an author, he's an actor, he's a film maker, and he's also the ex-commandant Navy Coastal Guards. He's authored around 14 books, and uh, they've been in diverse genres like espionage, crime, and also romance. But today we discuss his very, very latest book, and I'm sure it's going to be a very, very important book for all of us now and in future too. The Battle of Rizangla, which has been published by Penguin. It's a real story of 120 soldiers who fought really valiantly against 5,000 Chinese troops in uh, 1962 on 18th November, which perhaps prevented a possible occupation of entire Ladakh region. This story definitely needed to be told and welcome Kulpreet on our channel. It's definitely a privilege to host you today. So uh, as I was just saying, welcome Kulpreet, can you hear me? It's yeah, yeah, I can hear you now in between. Yeah, in between I lost your voice for a couple of seconds, but yes, Thank you very much, Nita, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you so much. You know, as uh, Major General Vikram Dev Dogra, he wrote in the foreword of your book that the story of the Battle of Rizangla is the stuff legends are made of. So why did you feel the story of Rizangla needed to be told? I know I've read the book. <laughs> no, you're totally emotionally attached to the subject. Yeah. So we need yeah. to know, the readers need to know, why did you really feel the story needed to be told? Uh, absolutely. So, uh, uh, Nita, uh, just in brief, um, you know, these soldiers, 120 soldiers who fought this battle, uh, most of them came from uh, the plains of uh, Haryana, mostly from South Haryana. And I belong to the same region. And two of them uh, were related to me. And ever since uh, I was a child, when I was in school, my father was in Air Force. And uh, when I was posted, my father was posted in Chandigarh for most of the period when I was in school. And during my visits to my village in Haryana, we used to hear a lot of, uh, you know, um, stories of the valor of these, uh, these soldiers who had fought uh, uh, on 18th November 1962. And that used to make me feel incredibly proud of the valiant effort that these people had put in and laid down their lives to safeguard our country and uh, to keep our borders uh, intact. But whenever after that, you, you know, my interaction with other students at the school, um, nobody had heard of Rizangla. And that kind of disappointed me. And uh, I, uh, I took the disappointment with me when my father went to Pune on transfer. I studied in, a, in an excellent college called Norujji Wadia College in Pune. Um, and there too, uh, to my dismay, uh, nobody had heard of uh, Battle of Rizangla. And subsequently, after finishing my graduation, when I went to the Naval Officers uh, Academy in 1991, January, I landed there. Uh, that time, the academy was in Goa. Now it is in uh, Azimala, or Arimala, as it is correctly pronounced in Kerala. Um, even in the Naval Officers Academy, nobody had heard of this battle. There were no books. There were no... No information at all. And uh, after that, I wore uniform for 23 years. I went to different locations. I commanded different units, did different, uh, uh, you know, um, interacted with a lot of people, you know, in a lot of forums. But nobody had heard of Battle of Zangla. And uh, 
but then i was not a writer uh, you know till the time i was uh, in the service uh, so this was something that was actually at the back of my mind was uh, something that was disturbing me but now two years ago when by the time i didn't about 10 odd books so i took this decision of writing battle of rizangla myself yeah totally understand but are you really overwhelmed by the response the narrative of the book is getting i mean i've been hearing such reviews <laughs> but i am i am i am i am completely overwhelmed i it is it is such an incredible feeling because the youth of the nation have really connected with this book yes. uh this book is what uh, as major general dogra also says this is the stuff that legends are made up made of and one can find so much of inspiration in this book not just for the army but whichever whatever job uh, you know um, a youngster is doing today this book uh, can really um, teach so many incredible lessons you know on on punctuality on training on res- resourcefulness on leadership on cooperation on time management so this book yeah i mean to answer your question i'm 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 really really very very glad that people are liking this book so much you know i'm sure your book will definitely inspire as you just said new generations to learn lessons from the gallant heroes of this very very epic battle you know i must admit that uh, reading your book the battle of rizangla gave me goosebumps especially when i realized that this incredible historical battle is unmatched in its devotion and its duty in yes, its valor yes. and its bravery yeah really historical significant and still i i would say a little underplayed in terms of being reported yeah one very important question which comes to my mind is that if the 120 soldiers of 13 kumau mm-hmm. battlefield or other battalion had mm-hmm. not stood against those 5000 chinese soldiers what do you think would have happened i think we would have completely uh, you know the first thing that chinese uh, would have done was to uh, take over the chushul airfield which was a nerve center which was uh, our only link with rest of india and uh, having done that then probably you know the whole area would have come under their occupation and probably we would not have had had the you know ladakh as part of our territory that is one strong possibility that the experts and analysts believe and uh, that is why this this battle becomes very important because these 120 jawans and one officer major shaitan singh and 120 jawans they they were aware that if they take a step back for which they had complete approval they had the brigade commander's approval after exhausting all the ammunition 600 ammunition 600 rounds per soldier they were very much it was in 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 their right to step back and find a better position in the rear and try to fight it out again and you know by the time probably the ammunitions would be supplied but they took this decision of not stepping back because they wanted to save that crucial and such an important historic land that belongs to india and today continues to be to be with india uh, because of these 120 men who laid down their lives so very right you know and uh, you've also mentioned in the preface of your book that when you thought about writing a book on arizangla you know all preceding events of your life uh, were a mere yeah. builder for this yes. it took you uh, two and a half years to write uh, a war which lasted around 7 hours yeah. so yeah. how was the sense of fulfillment when you finally wrote what you have dreamt of all along all along i'm yeah. sure as you mentioned it's, since you were a child and what yeah, was the most yeah. challenging part yeah yeah so uh, you, you're right i mean at, at a subconscious level uh, probably this thought of writing this book not exactly book but doing something about this story uh, has always been part of my being ever since i was a child only thing is i was not aware because we know that sometimes we have intent to do something we but we but but it is not in the front part of our mind and we don't understand it um these two and a half years uh, what was the most challenging part i think every bit was challenging because this happened uh, quite some time ago there was not much information available in the public domain about this um i'm really glad that i could plan uh, and uh, you know a visit to 13 kumau meet the commanding officer and he was able to uh, you know um, search make a search party uh, from his team 
and find out some document in some book, particularly the war book, which was entered at that time, you know, the, the people had entered it uh, in ink. It's a leather bound book. And uh, it had not been touched for years and years, and they were able to find it and share it with me. So that uh, uh, gave me a lot of information, of course, in addition to interacting with people. So everything was a challenge, you know, um, you setting out, you know, um, away from your house, going and meeting people, you don't know how the reception is going to be, uh, traveling to villages, uh, you know, uh, interacting with the uh, with, with the soldiers' families, it's going to be an emotional experience. And one of the emotional experiences is part of the epilogue of my book. Uh, yes. uh, it, it, it was, there were challenges, emotional challenges, physical challenges, research challenges, uh, information challenges in every step that I took, to be honest with you. But it feels so good that, uh, you know, I had the backing of, uh, of a big publisher from the proposal stage I had the backing of 13 Kumau. I had the backing of these martyrs and their families. And I think I, I felt I'm not a great believer of God, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, but, you know, I felt that some kind of invisible force, which is kind of egging me on, which is, you know, every step I take, I discover something new. So there was um, some divine power in that sense, if there is. Uh, which 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 kind of handheld me and took me towards this towards this goal and and today uh, I think among all my books all my books oh, Kulpreet, uh, your Wi-Fi needs to be uh, has really, uh, is something that uh, has become the most important book for me now. So right. I mean, I'm sure uh, emotionally, totally exhausting yeah, experience. Your voice. You. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, we've lost you. Some somehow you're frozen hello. on the screen. Yes, Kulpreet. Hello. Yeah, we've lost you. <laughs> I'm on. Now you're better. Yeah, it's it's actually. Yeah, just a moment. Yeah, sure. For uh, everyone else who's joined in late, we're discussing a very, very important book of attacks, The Battle of Rizangla. Uh, we are just having a little bit of a Wi-Fi issue, which Kulpreet has just gone to solve. And um, the recording of this uh, conversation will also be available on well, YouTube. Well, I'm extremely sorry for that. Um, probably it's some kind of... Uh, is, is it better now? Ah, it is better. We can yeah. hear you. We can also see you. <laughs> Otherwise, you were frozen. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I can right. understand it was definitely an emotionally exhausting experience for you too. You know, um, those who join late, I must say that this book is a story of bravery of one officer and his 120 soldiers. We are talking about late Major Katan Singh, which, who had a very, very important role to play in this. And he, in fact, he was awarded with the highest military decoration, Paramvir Chakra. And this battle was fought on 18 November 1962. Not to forget Surja Ram, Ram Chandar, Hari Ram, everyone, larger than lives. So, but uh, Ulpreet, how has writing this book changed you as a person? Because I'm sure it's a very influential and it's a very uh, path-breaking book. Uh, as a reader, I felt transformed by reading the velour of a battle which is not known to many people. Uh, I I think it will be hard for me to answer when, you know, how it has changed me. But I think uh, as an officer in uniform and as a third generation soldier from my family, I've always been very close to the uniform. So the cause of patriotism comes, I think, naturally to me and my to, my, to most of my relatives. Um, more than uh, anything, I think it's a, it's a fulfillment. Uh, that I that I feel because I think I've done my bit by uh, commanding three units by doing my best in 23 years uh, as a uniformed officer, but now having done this, which normally officers are not able to do even if they want to, and uh, I'm I I really feel uh, you know very lucky that I've you know I've got this skill. So there's more of 
fulfillment because these soldiers who were you know heroes only they in the of their villages today the youngsters are talking about them today uh, people uh, people have learned about their sacrifice so more than anything else it gives me a lot of uh, a sense of satisfaction and a gratitude uh, for these people and uh, and very very extensive research also that you carried through but um, i also read and it was mentioned in one of the photographs of the book that you uh, you met captain ramchandar who's the veer chakra yes. he's, he's a surviving yes. 1962 war veteran to unfortunately he's no more right now but so how was your meeting with him you know it must have been a very very historical moment an emotional moment for you quickly we have lost you again i think there is uh yeah it was emotional because you know uh, i found out about his village uh, in haryana and i me and my brother we uh, drove to his village and uh, he's got a large house in the village with a large courtyard and uh, we were not knowing his number so we had reached unannounced we did not know what to expect um it was uh, in winter because it was just uh, in this uh, the, the the last winter sorry uh so uh, we entered this courtyard and found one middle aged man to whom we introduced ourselves and he happened to be um, uh, you know his son who works for the delhi police and uh, we said this is our purpose and he said yeah my father is taking rest and wanted to come inside and he took us to the a kind of a living room a semi living room kind of a thing where he was lying down on a cot in the middle of the morning just relaxing and uh, when he saw us he realized that these people are from outside so he just straightened and uh, you know sat up i supported him a little and thereafter the moment i said battle of rezangla he just started i mean it was as if a button had switched on you know everything was fresh in his mind and uh, with rapt attention me and my brother with a camera recorder on we we recorded his uh, video interview uh and uh, he, he of course at the age of 96 you you know your your uh, you, you've got so much of restriction but he was he was mostly okay i mean apart from a little bit of vision problem and hearing problem i thought he's going to uh, be there for a long time but unfortunately uh, after that meeting uh, two months later i came to know that he passed away yeah i read about that and uh, really sad but yes uh, at least uh, you could meet him Um, before that in january 2021 and uh, you know uh, when i read your book i remember that you quoted uh, major shatan singh and i think uh, his uh, relevance to the book and to the battle is unsur- i mean unsurpassable like he mentions to the soldiers that death is unacceptable but defeat is not and then he also says that defend till the last man and the last bullet So do you think he was the major force behind uh, the motivation of the, how 120 soldiers could fight such a big army you think he was one of the major connecting forces yeah. I I think I think 100% yes because uh, you know these 120 people fought with minimum resources uh, you know um, they fought like a war machine you know they were so well trained they were so highly motivated and this was not possible without the leadership of major shetan singh so his role has been crucial and there are reasons for that uh during my research i came to know that major shetan singh was extremely close to his troops he would rather spend his time with his soldiers than with his than with his officers he was quiet he was observant he was a very sound tactician uh, as confirmed to me by radio operator another ramchandar who also retired as honorary captain who was his radio operator and also his orderly who is uh, still there i met him and uh, he said uh, major saab was a very strong uh, tactician mm-hmm. and an example that everyone used to look up to you know so uh, i think his his leadership is probably uh, uh, 50% i would say Uh, and 50 percent is, of course, the leadership of the JCOs and uh, and the and the Jawans themselves. So yes, his role has been extremely crucial. Yes. And uh, anything else that you'd like to mention about the book that we missed out? Because I have few very interesting people waiting to be in the interactive round, and I'd like to give the space to them as well. 
So anything okay, that so you'd like to, any last thoughts on the book that you would like to mention before I move on to um, a much coveted interactive round? I, I, I don't want uh, the people to be waiting for uh, for more time, so we can probably start with them. I just would like to say that uh, this book is special. This book is um, the the so story of the sacrifice of these people is larger than us, and uh, we must read it. If people don't want to read my book, it's okay, but uh, probably they can uh, you know um, research about this and uh, and try to talk about this battle and try to draw some inspiration from this in their personal lives for for fulfillment of their own goals and to achieve success. So very right. Absolutely. Uh, right now we have Nena Sagar with us. Uh, thank you, Nena, for uh, being instrumental in getting this session together. She's an actor. She's an author. She also writes at times. And she's a director in theater circuit in the capital. And she's been into theater for the last 15 years, uh, has been a corporate warrior, and uh, is also getting into her beauty business. So Nena, I'd like to hear from you now. Nena Sagar, please switch on your video. Maybe we can move on to Mr. Vijay Shankar right now. I think uh, she's unable to switch on her video. Uh, we'll come back to Nena a little later. Uh, oh, yes, Mr. Vijay Shankar, he's an advocate with Delhi Court and she's he's interested in history and literature and quite a regular with us on our Channel. Yes, Vijay. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Many, many congratulations evening. on your book. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, thank sir. you. Thank you very much. Uh, good sir, evening. If you permit me, I have two questions. Sure. Uh, sir, my first question is Sir, India was one of the few countries to have been uh, quoting the People's Republic of China out of the way despite getting constant warnings about the Chinese intentions vis a vis India. How do you explain this? During the relevant period of time, I mean, from uh, 1949 onwards. My second question, mm -hmm. it's also a bit related, that why did the Indian establishment not take any concrete steps despite the Chinese invasion of Tibet and the subsequent hardening of the Chinese position vis-a-vis -vis India, despite having standing and battle-hardened armored forces inherited from the British Empire? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'll answer your second question first. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, during the course of research of this book, I had spent considerable energy and cons considerable amount of time to understand what was happening from 1947 till 1962. And technically, with respect to China, because the new government came in power uh, in 1949. So from 1949 till 1962, how are our relations and how they deteriorated? There are ample amount of literature out there, a lot of research material. Um, my understanding is, uh, you know, I would like to bring out two, three important facts here. One is uh, in 1947, India was an extremely poor country. Uh, so was China. Uh, and uh, the Indian government took a conscious decision of uh, uh, you know, taking care of poverty first. And uh, there was a feeling among the policymakers at the top that the that because of the you know damage and destruction in World War II, world wars are a thing of past. Nations will not attack each other. So our focus was, uh, you know, removal of poverty, whereas the Chinese focus was uh, building up of uh, their, their military. So though we were... Uh, almost equal as far as the military strength and military uh, standing is concerned in 1949. But we kind of started downsizing our uh, army and uh, correspondingly, China started uh, improving their army. So of course, they, there were famines and there were a lot of poverty. A lot of people died there. Uh, India started becoming better in terms of uh, you know, um, the social upliftment, but the army became weak. And uh, one of the major... Uh, uh, you know, mistakes or disasters for India was we had a very, very basic uh, intelligence in the form of IB, which was headed for, for a prolonged period of time by one gentleman called Bhola Nath Mullik. He's also written his memoirs, which I've read, and they're, they're incredible account. Uh, I don't really, there's no reason for anybody to blame him because he was head of a very small, minuscule uh, intelligence, which was compromised at every step. 
So we had no clue what the Chinese were doing. So we were thinking the Chinese are talking to us to settle the border problem, and uh, they will keep, you know, we will keep uh, making progress and things will happen. Chinese were in a hurry, and uh, they were also confident about the military. So when when uh, when the time came, they surprised us by this attack, and the whole nation was surprised. Not just the Indian Army and the and the intelligence bureau, but the whole nation, the political establishment, and and everyone. So. Um, so uh, we did not do anything because we did not see it coming. That's the second question. I, I'm sorry, I, you know, got a little confused about your first question. If you can kindly repeat, Mr. Shankar. Sir, my first question was that, uh, despite getting warnings about the Chinese intentions, uh, India was one of the few countries to have quoted the People's Republic of China out of the way during the relevant period of time. That was 1949 to 1962 onwards. Mm -hmm. India was playing almost breeze to the Rome in China before every other international forum. Yeah. Like you, you, this you are, Hindi, Chini, Bhai Bhai, Bonomi yeah, was continuing yeah. despite the warnings. Yeah, you, you, you are absolutely right. In fact, uh, after, in, in the manner that, uh, you know, uh, the, the Communist Party took over uh, China, you know, in 1949, uh, and the world was not ready to recognize, uh, you know, this government as a, as a legitimate government, India played a crucial role uh, at the United Nations and get, getting them that legitimacy. I think that was that was a call that our ministers took, our policymakers took, our strategists, uh, uh, our you know statesmen took. But I think that was a wrong call because uh, that uh, uh, was not valued by them, and uh, they never understood our uh, you know extend that we were extending our hands of friendship for them. They they took it they, they took us for granted, and I think this is an assessment. Uh, anybody can make, you know, with a, with a friend. You know, you might consider someone as your friend, but he may not really be your friend. He might he might be all along uh, planning to damage you or dis, you know do some destruction. So uh, that was a wrong assessment. And I think if we had a bit better intelligence, perhaps uh, things uh, could have been different. But uh, on the other side, I can also say that because 1962 happened, we had 65 and we had 71, and uh, uh, it gave us an opportunity after that loss to put our house in order, and we did that very well. Because had China not attacked in 1962, I don't, I really don't know what would have happened in 65 and 71. Right? The situation would not have been uh, as it is now. I hope I've answered answered your questions. Thank you, sir. I've been sufficient. My answers, uh, questions have been sufficiently answered, sir. I myself Thank come you. from Rashtriya Military School, Ajmer. Oh wow, I'm very Georgian. Nice. Okay, sir, so wow. my, that's, that's, my, that's, that's, my that's hats off to the uh, Vila Hills, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, we have one question from Mr. Madhur, and he says that if you could kindly please take us through the writing process and the sequence of events which you have mentioned in the book. We like to read the book, he says, but uh, maybe a little bit of an idea about how okay. the sequences unfold. Yeah, so. Uh, Broadly speaking, you know, this book was uh, the writing process was can be divided into two parts. The first was research, and the second was writing itself. Uh, out of two and a half years, I think it took me close to one and a half year of research, which basically comprised of uh, first reading all the books available on the 1962 war. But then I realized that is not enough. So everything that was related to military and uh, important politics and important developments happening play, happening in India from 47 till 62 was the first thing that I did. Um, uh, thereafter, the military journals, the, uh, the research uh, you know, articles, scholarly articles written by military scholars everywhere, the documents which have been declassified. Uh, some of the documents have not been declassified till now. Uh, we have Brooks Henderson report, part two of which has not been declassified. Part one has also not been declassified, but uh, it, it is available on the internet. Uh, so everybody's read it. Um, after the research was done, of course, there was a lot of legwork required. So I went and met uh, 13 Kumau, uh, you know, commanding officer, as I said, interacted with them, also did some legwork in uh, interacting with the survivors of the war. And after all this information was ready and collated, then um, um, uh, I, I sat down and I started the process of writing. And uh, I wanted to keep it very linear. So we started, we start with Baramula where 13 Kumau is, uh, uh, was stationed in the month of September, from where they were uh, 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 asked to march to 
uh, asked to go to uh, Leh for acclimatization. They were there for 10 plus days. And thereafter, they came to Chushul and then finally to Rizangla. So I followed their track, um, the way it really happened. Uh, this is not a very big book. It's just about 178 pages. I did not want to uh, fatten it up unnecessarily with you know a lot of uh, uh, things which uh, which probably you know I mean there's no fiction involved here so I wanted to just restrict myself to fact and uh, uh, so it was all written in a sequential manner so uh, it's it's about how they get the information how they move how they rest and uh, you know prepare themselves for the battle. Uh, what difficulties they come across because they don't have, uh, you know, in, in preparation for the battle. And finally, when the battle actually happens, uh, then what steps they take and how uh, they cooperate and support each other uh, in fighting the battle. So uh, one last thing I would like to say is that I'm not a, uh, I, I was someone who did not have that much knowledge about infantry maneuvers on land and certainly not about uh, high altitude uh, mountain warfare. But my brother's army officer is a retired colonel, and uh, I, I took his help as well. After writing, I took help of, in fact, about half a dozen other army officers. Having written this book, I also passed it on to them for peer review, for them to give, you know, give me feedback. This is not done, this is not acceptable, or this is not okay. It was given by these army officers. I thought I'm in a strong position and uh, then only the book was uh, finalized. Lovely. Uh, there's another question from Babita Batra. Uh, yeah. uh, she has started reading a book and she writes that it is really, you know, it is as if the sequence of events are uh, unfolding in front of her. And since you're an actor and filmmaker, she says, so are you thinking about maybe making a web series on this? Because I'm sure this is going to be very interesting. Any plans for that? We've lost you. I think, um, can you please unmute yourself? Dear, can you please unmute him? We've lost him. Yeah, you're there. Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Okay, so... Uh... So, so the question by Nena is about uh, the film process, is it? Yeah, not but, only that. I mean, she says that she started reading the book. Okay. And uh, uh, she started reading the book and she finds it uh, as if, you know, the events are unfolding in front of her. So any plans of making a web series on this book so that it can even reach out to uh, more people? Since you're a yeah, yeah, no, no, thanks. yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nena, for this wonderful question. Uh, so this uh, this is definitely uh, on the plans. In fact, uh, uh, a good production company has already taken the rights of the book to make a film. Film is uh, what is being planned, not a web series, because we did have a web series of the same battle um, uh, two years ago, and uh, we are now doing a uh, we we will be doing a film on this. So production companies bought the rights. They are in talks with some other players, and this is going to be a high budget film because of the terrain and because of the you know the the story itself is that way so uh, how and when it will happen i don't know but uh, we are very very excited about it and probably will make a announcement soon so please do remain connected on my social media pages i'll be making making announcement and uh, yeah happy reading to you rena please uh, finish the book and do let me know what you think lovely lovely and uh, there are a lot of people who've already ordered the book and uh... Uh, one of them had also requested if they can, he can have a personally signed book by you. So I'm sure I'll make you a personal request on that. And sure. uh, yeah, we have Saloni Kapoor who wanted to ask that, um, why do you think, maybe in few words, that why why do you think a book like Battle of Rizangla mm -hmm. should be read? I know you answered in bits uh, during the conversation, but this is what she wanted to ask. Yeah, so no, no, that's a good question, and uh, it's, it's a fair question that for anybody to ask, why should I do this or why should I do that? Um, so my my answer to this is that uh, probably you just need to read a few lines to to understand what the story is, because this is a story of valor that nobody has talked about in the last 
so many decades of uh, you know india's existence um and in addition to that uh, as i've already mentioned uh, you know 120 people fighting 5000 better armed better equipped better trained uh, people just uh, by sheer passion and sheer courage uh, and uh, how how and what they did so uh, that is what the story is made up of made up of and uh, i hope uh, people read it and they like it lovely uh, i don't think there are more questions but then it's definitely has been a very very insightful uh, conversation on one of the very less known of the battles uh, yes uh, we have nana uh, joining us nana can you please switch on your question your uh, your video please thank you can you please unmute yourself Yes, Nena. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi, Nena. Yes, hi, we can see you. We can hear you. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. I'm fine. I'm fine. Atha, this was uh, Kulpit. I think the previous question was by Babita uh, about yes. uh, uh, the film, uh, the book being made into a film or a web series. so that was not me and i wanted i had one question i am mostly through with the reading but still there is some portion left so mm-hmm. one thing what i wanted to ask is uh, the charlie company as you describe in the book uh, uh, you know they uh, the soldiers who fought the battle were from the plains of haryana belonging mm-hmm. uh, to the ahir community most of them and you mm-hmm. yourself as you said being a third generation officer and uh, all of them having contributed to this glorious battle then so i want to know from you so uh, what is uh, the current scenario uh, since since most of those people have contributed to that war in such a big way mm-hmm. how, what is what is the tradition like now i mean do do the families really send uh, their boys or their sons to fight uh on the fronts what is it like now or have they moved on to being warriors in the corporate sector or the business sector how 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 is the thing now yeah so it is thing is uh, thanks for the question nena um the thing is pretty much the same uh i think it's part of the social fabric uh the part of upbringing of that particular belt uh, since i hail from that belt and uh, if you ever go to the villages of haryana that side you will realize that people still aspire to uh, protect uh, the nation uh, which they have been doing for for decades in fact it goes you know even even back when the britishers were there so uh, yes to answer the question uh, mothers and fathers parents they still feel very proud to send their children to army to navy to air force to bsf to to any uh, you know in any way that they can uh, they can um you know work for the security and safety of of the nation uh desh seva you know they say is dharm so protecting uh, the land motherland is our religion uh in fact uh, uh, the in 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 haryana otherwise also the the penetration of religion uh and traditions and customs re- is relatively lower as compared to to the other parts of india so it's it's more about soldiering i think soldiering is a tradition there uh it's part of the imagination of the people okay. it's part of the upbringing and uh yes that's it it's very much there so so heartening to know this so heartening to know this thank you kulpreet thank you nena thank you nena for joining in and for making this session possible as i mentioned she's an actor she's not her she's also uh into her organic beauty care business and uh, nena all the best for everything and thank you kulpreet for such thank an engaging so <laughs> and giving us your valuable time um, i really wish you luck for the greater even the greater success of the book the battle of rizan thank you very much and thank you for making uh, for being here and taking out your valuable time thank you very much nita it was a pleasure thank you very much for inviting me and uh, thanks to all the listeners for listening in all the very best jai hind jai hind jai hind everyone thank you Yeah, can you um yeah thank you 
they can you switch off the live please